this next example, we just need to find one of those four things that we found the last time. And this time we're just going to find the focus. Okay. However, it's going to be just slightly harder because we're not going to be given it in the form that we want. Okay. So what you could have is negative x squared plus 4x plus 3y plus 8 equals 0. Why are you being blurry and annoying? Come on. There we go. Okay, so the key thing you always want to look for, like I've been saying, is look for the squareds. So squareds are going to help you tell what kind of parabola this is. And so I see I have an x squared. I don't have a y squared, which means I want to be in that form that is x minus h squared equals 4py minus k. All right. However, right now I notice that my x squared is negative. So what I want to do, I want to get all the x's on the same side. Okay. And over here, guys, I wrote that problem wrong. I was like, something feels weird. Yeah, that should be 4x. Okay. So I want to get all the x's on the same side. And I want to get all the y and the number on the same side. My thing right now is I know I typically have x squared on the left. However, I have a negative here, and so I'm just going to add it over to the right so I don't have to deal with negatives anymore, okay? And it will make my life a lot easier. So what we're going to start with is I'm moving all the x's over. So I'm left with 3y plus 8 equals x squared minus 4x. Okay. Now we need to do the thing we've been wanting to do. We want to change this x squared minus 4x to a perfect square, essentially. It's called completing the square. And so this is that, okay, take the b value, I divide by 2 kind of thing. So we can do that off to the side over here. And so that's going to be this x squared minus 4x plus what? So that way I can get it to be an x, x, and have them be the same thing. And so you take that negative 4, you divide it by 2, and you square it to find this value. And to find these values, it is just that negative 4 divided by 2. Well, negative 4 divided by 2 is, we all know, minus 2 minus 2. And negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, but we got to square it, so that comes out to a positive 4. And so what I know this is going to become is x minus 2 squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 4 to complete this square. If I add 4 to the right side of the equation, I also guess what I need to add 4 to the left side. So I'm going to add 4 here and add 4 there. Okay, so now what we have is 3y plus 8 plus 4 is 12 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay. Looking at this y minus k, you see how there's something out front. We factor out a GCF. Essentially, that's what 4p is, is factoring out the GCF. So what's the GCF here? Obviously 3. So I'm left with y plus 4. All right? And so how I did that is I just divided each of these by 3 to get what was left over. And this is that completing the square. I'm at x minus 2 squared. And that's coming from that guy over there. All right, so now we're in the form we want it to be. The only difference is we're just flipped across the equal sign. So if you are OCD like me and you want to flip it back across so it's the exact, exact, go for it. Remember from geometry, that is your symmetric property. All righty. Um, so now we need to have the equation. So now we can actually find our focus. So I'm looking at this. This is an x squared one, so it's up or down. Okay, um, it's positive p value, so it's going to be actually up. Okay, and so my vertex right now is going to help me find my focus. It's at a positive 2, negative 4. So if I'm going to sketch this, positive 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, but it's going up like this. Okay, so there we go. That is my vertex. And we know the foci is right in the middle of that parabola. Okay, so the foci is right in here, and I want to know what that point is. Well, to know what that point is, I have to find my p-value. And so right now, I have 
p equals 3. That's the 4p part, right? So I know my p is equal to 3 fourths. And this is why you want to draw the picture or visualize it in your head, is so that way you know, okay, what value am I going to add or subtract potentially 3 fourths to? So right now I'm looking at the foci and it's going to go up from the vertex. So if I'm going to go up, that's going to go to the y. And since I'm going up, it's going to be plus. So I'm going to take my vertex and my foci or my focus is going to be 2 comma negative 4 plus 3 fourths, which we know will come out to 2 comma negative 3.25. Right. And just like I was saying earlier in the last video, um, you don't need to actually write a decimal. You can write it as a fraction if you want. I don't really care. Um, if Alex cares, uh, they'll tell you in the explanation or there'll be certain like fraction boxes and it won't even let you type a decimal. Okay, and I trust you all know how to change a decimal into a, a fraction. And if you don't, just Zoom meeting me and we can figure it out together. Alrighty, so that is the one example. What I want to do is I want to give you a second one to try on your own for a little bit, okay? So, same process and everything, um, but guess what? Instead of an x squared, it's going to be a y squared, okay? So 4y squared plus, eight, oops, sorry, negative 4y squared plus 8y plus x minus 1 equals 0. All right, so pause the video once you have that written down and go ahead and try to find, uh, complete the square and try to find uh, the equation, okay? All right, so what we always wanna do to get started is get our y's on the same side and keep our x's on. Because I have a negative leading coefficient, I'm just gonna move that over. So I'm gonna have an x plus one equals a negative four y squared, oh, sorry. Is early okay positive 4y squared but minus the 8y <clears> hey <throat> okay. I hope you're noticing right now we've never done it when the leading coefficient is at 1 and that's there's a reason why okay because our equation is always y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h, all right? I don't have any leading coefficients in front of the y. I don't have any numbers outside the y minus k squared. I have none of that. That all needs to be out in front of the x. So what I need to do is I need to divide this mess by four because I need this to be a leading coefficient of one, all right? And so dividing it by four is the same as timesing it by a fourth. And what we do to one side, we also need to do to the other. Okay, so we're going to have 1 fourth x plus 1 equals y squared minus 2y. All right, I hope we're doing okay so far. If you want to distribute the 1 fourth in, you can, okay, or you can leave it factored out um, outside. Uh, it's Right now, it doesn't really matter, but eventually when we're going to complete the square, you're going to need to add the one-fourth and something together kind of thing. All right, so here we go. We need to go ahead and complete this square, so we can do that off to the side. I have my y squared minus 2y, and I need to add something to it. So I know what goes here is my uh, negative 2, your b value, divided by 2, and then you square it, which becomes just 1. Okay, and so now we just know that's y minus 1 times y minus 1, which is y minus 1 squared. <coughs> so what we have over here is we're going to add a positive 1 to both sides. All right, and if I add a positive 1, I get 1 fourth x plus, that's 5 fourths, equals um, y minus 1 squared. All right, and so this is the weirdest thing, is remember, we want to have this 4p x minus h thing. 
And so I need to find a GCF of 1 fourth and 5 fourths. And I hope most of you are realizing I don't think there is one. Or if there is one, I don't want to deal with it because it's fractions and that seems disgusting. Okay. Um, reality is, is trying to mess with this is just going to get super, super nasty. Um, what we could do is pull out and take a f the fractions away. Because we, none of us, like to have fractions, correct? Okay, so 1 4th x plus 5 4 sounds terrible. But if I take out that 1 4th, I'm left with x plus 5. Okay, and so when you have fractions and they're the same denominator, just pull it out, okay? And if you were to distribute that back in, guess what you would get? 1 4th x plus 5 4th. Okay, so pull out the bottom denominator, all right? And then you're going to be set to go. That is always going to be when you have fractions, that's going to be your GCF, all right? So don't sit there and try to list factors of 1 4th and all of that. Don't need to worry about that, okay? Common denominator, that's what you're pulling out. And now it looks much more, hopefully, like what we had with that x minus h. All right, and we have our y minus 1 squared, okay? So we still need to find the foci. So hopefully from here you can do it, okay? Um, so our vertex, remember the x still goes with the x, so we're at negative 5, positive 1. Okay, and I know 4p equals 1 fourth, so my p this time is going to be 1 eighth. Alright, and if you need help doing that, what I'm doing, dividing by 4, what I'm really doing is multiple, oh, not even 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, multiplying by 1 fourth, okay. So it's a super annoying p value, but we can handle this, I believe in us, alright. So here we're looking at our equation, my y squared one, so it's going to go left or right. Um, it's positive, so therefore right. So if I'm at a negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 1, and we're going this way, okay? So I know my focus in this is going to be right in that mess, and it is 1 16th away from the vertex, but it's 1 16th away to the right. So to get my foci, I will just take negative 5 and add a 16th, comma 1. So negative 5 plus a 16th, uh, you could just write that as negative 4, and let's see, we would be at 15 sixteenths, positive 1. All right, you can convert it to a decimal, don't really care how you do that math, whatever makes sense to you, okay? And that would be your answer. All right, I think that is by far the hardest one you will have, but uh, just remember if you have questions or anything, you can always Zoom and uh, we can work through some of those problems.